Pico Labs is a new text to video AI generator and it could create some really great looking video clips, but you gotta know how to prompt it correctly. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get started with Pico Labs and exactly how to craft the perfect prompt to get really interesting and cinematic videos. So if you go to pika.art, it's gonna bring you to this page and you could join the beta. Pika Labs actually takes place inside of Discord. So if you click this link, it's gonna bring you to Discord. So you do need to create yourself a Discord account if you don't have one and then join Pika Labs here. And here inside of the Pika Labs Discord, it's gonna give you some introductions here on how to get started. But in this video, I'm gonna walk you through that. Basically the way you could create is you could go to these different channels so these generate channels is where people are creating. So you could kind of see some of the creation and the prompts. But if you go over here and if you show the membered list up here on Discord, you could go ahead and right click here and message the Pika chatbot here directly. So right here, you could see I've created all these privately, which is a much better user experience than doing it in those generate channels. But you can do it in both places. You could create your prompt over here and get these kind of videos. So to generate a video here, all you have to do is come to this message box right here and just press slash here, and you'll get an option here to either create, this is what I'm gonna show you first, or to animate. I'm gonna show you both of these. So if you press create, your text prompt will go over here. So my prompt is create digital artwork of children dancing with joy in the rain and I just have to press enter after that. Now I'm gonna show you more about how to structure the perfect prompt. I just wanna show you how fast this actually works. Right now, as I'm recording this, this is in beta and it's completely free. I'm assuming at some point they're gonna take it out of beta when it gets better and they're gonna actually roll out a pricing model to it too. And here is the video, let me just press play. And this video is three seconds. So the video it generates are three seconds long. And it's okay, right? It actually, the motion is okay, but the actual graphic is not great. What you could do is you could press this icon right here and this will give you another version of it. Or you could press this option right here and you'll open up the prompt box here where you could alter your prompt. So maybe something's not quite right. You wanna add some motion, you could go ahead and do this as a new prompt and press submit. So just to show you an example here, one of the parameters I'm gonna show you is actually how to make this a different size. So by default it's 16 by nine, that's typical size for a video. But if you type in dash AR space, and then one by one, basically this format is gonna make you a square version. If you type in another version is nine by 16, this will give you a vertical version. So in this case, let me just leave it at one by one. And I'll go ahead and create this as well. And let me go ahead and press play. Okay, that's not too bad here. With any of these, you could just go ahead and press download right here. They will have a watermark again with this free version of it. But the examples I showed you in the beginning are this second option, which if I go over here and press slash, there's this animate option here where you could use an image as a prompt. And then you have this other box here where you could add a little bit of text to alter it, like camera movements, for example. Now with this, you're gonna get far better results, okay? Just to give you an example, I did one up here. I'm gonna exit this one right now. So here's a prompt, a charming and expressive CGI animated character, right? So this is what Pika Lab made for me, which looks like a horror movie, kind of. And there's a floating hand, right? Not great. Now this exact same prompt also gave me this right? A much, much better version of the same thing. Now, the way I did that is by animating an image. Where did I get this image? Well, I'm inside of Discord, so I already have a Midjourney membership. So I just created these inside of Midjourney here. And then I just downloaded these. Midjourney lets you upscale them. So you could just click over here and then you could right click and save these here. So I just saved this. And then I could actually use Pika Lab here and animate that and bring it to life. And all the different versions I've created here are basically using that animate option. So what I recommend is if you don't have Midjourney, go ahead and use Dolly 3 inside of Bing. So this is the website, bing.com slash create. This is gonna use Dolly 3. It's gonna make some really great looking images. Now Midjourney I think is still better, but it is a paid membership. Bing.com slash create, powered by Dolly 3 is completely free. This is also inside of the paid version of ChatGPT. So I recommend using some kind of prompt to get the image and then go back to Pika 
and I'm going to press slash again. This time I'm going to choose animate instead of create. So this option is going to give me this box. I'm going to click here and I'm going to add my image to it. And here I usually will press enter here and it will go to work. And once it goes to work, I could actually alter that prompt to give it some movement. So I'm going to explain that movement in a second. But right now, while this is going, let me give you the perfect prompt structure. So there's really five parts to this prompt. And usually you would do this with the create option, but you want to start with your subject. So in this case, it was that little boy was my subject. Then the scene, so describing the environment. Then the shot description, that's basically the size of the shot. Do you want a really wide shot? Do you want a close up of a face? Describe your shot that way. Then you have style. So in most cases, I usually use the word cinematic here, but this is where you could describe your style here. Then you have your aspect ratio. So again, by default, it's gonna make this size right here, 16 by nine, which is the normal video, how you're watching this. But if you wanna make a square or vertical, just putting your aspect ratio. So that was dash AR space, and then the aspect ratio that you want like this, one by one, two by three, whatever you want, will change that size. So here's the video here. So it looks pretty good, but it looks like the expression is not quite there. So what you could do is alter the prompt over here. So if you click this option here, you'll get the prompt box back. But because I used an image, there will be nothing here. So I usually say subtle face movement. So with these early versions of text to video generation platforms, you want really subtle movement. It's not gonna do a good job with any fast movement. And then you could press submit and it's gonna go to work over here. So here I'll show you a few examples of the medium shot. So waist up is a medium shot. So that's how I would describe the shot here and I press play, you could see the movement is much more subtle. The face is not completely getting distorted. So if you ask for subtle movement, that is what's going to happen. This other one too, you could see it's very subtle movement. Even in the rain here, you could see you got very subtle rain. Now these are only three seconds long. You could always take them into a video editing platform and slow them down even more to stretch out the length of them. But right now they will be limited in the beta version to three seconds. And this one's another one I made in mid journey here. And you could see very, very nice movement here. Very nice wind here going through the hair, very subtle movement on the face. Blinking looks very natural. And this image here, again, I created in mid journey. This one actually had the person rotating. So on the follow up, I asked for person walks forward. And if I said person walks forward, it has the person walking forward or towards camera. And you also have camera movements. So you could do camera zooms in, camera zooms out, camera pans left, camera pans right. If you wanna add camera movement to it, I found that if I keep my camera movement limited, it's gonna give me the best results. But you could, again, always press this option here to get a new version. And remember, you could always click this option to go ahead and alter your prompt here. This is where that camera movement, zoom in, zoom out, pan left, right, tilt down, tilt up, those are gonna go over here. But that may give you some unexpected results. Right now, Pika Labs, as I'm recording this tutorial, I recommend you create images elsewhere like Dolly 3 or Mid Journey and bring them and animate them here using the subtle prompt to make the movements very subtle so it doesn't completely fall apart. And usually if you start with closer shots, it's gonna do a much better job than something really wide. And I also recommend you check out Runway if you wanna turn text or images into a video. That's the leading platform right now. It is paid, but it is very, very good. It's getting better all the time. I have a complete tutorial that I'll link below as well if you wanna learn how that works. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.